Hello, it's Friday, and Apple is updating its policies for uh, app deletion content. Twitch gets hacked and is leaking data, and Apache has new security vulnerabilities and flaws that needs an update. This is the Insecurity Brief podcast. It features tech news and analysis throughout the world. This podcast is made possible through advertising and listeners like you. If you can't donate, please share this program. We depend on you. Apple made a change recently in its policies that uh, developers have to have the ability so that data that is collected about individuals gets terminated or deleted at the end. In other words, right now when you install an app, any app on any mobile device and you give you give permission, quote unquote, the permission for grabbing your camera data, for example, or listening to your microphone. The way that these are written, they're written in a language so that when you give permission for uh, Timmy's Puzzle Pizza Frog app on your phone for your kid, okay, and you put this app on your phone, and it wants access to your microphone. Well, the way the agreement writes, it st- will state that this company, whoever this company is, gives express permission for it to collect and share it with their partners. And the shared permission gets sent over to Jack Ripmeoff, Inc., who uses that data and that hook and the microphone permission for eternity. So when you sever the program, you delete the frog program from your cell phone. Actually, Jack's ripped me off. Doesn't matter because you deleted the app. You didn't delete the agreement. So what Apple's getting at here is they're saying that the holder of the originating data has to delete the data when somebody removes or attempts to remove the application. Could be an email address or something. You know, this this whole thing about uh, data security and where the data goes, it, it, it's a step, but is it really, really enough of a step that uh, it's going to be fruitful? Um, I really am not sure if it is or not. What do you think, honey? Yeah, I mean, some of the some of the article is saying that if you want to delete your uh, account from within an app, that you still might have to be passed to a website and you might have to email them in order to get your data purged. But really, I mean, the trust of all this is that you're trusting all your data with Apple, with these third parties. And do you, do you trust big business like this? Are these guys ethical? Are, you know, have they already shared it with, like you said, with a malicious guy, with the data broker, and now you're just out of luck? I don't so, trust any of these guys. I think either. they're all, I think they're all crooks. And, you know, this is the thing. we. We continue to get, we continue to get manipulated and screwed over. Honestly, I mean, every one of these applications, every one of these companies that make electronics for us have violated our trust. Every single one. There isn't one good one in the bunch. So what makes you think that one action by one small company is going to have any effect? I mean, we're watching... We're watching all of this stuff unfold in front of us, but it's a little too late, I, I think, anyway. Well, also in the article, 
they said that they've reintroduced a report a problem link within the app within the app store which is doing customer support and i don't know if anyone else has experienced this as well but the customer support for things like facebook for things like google and it sounds like apple is reintroducing it so there actually is some sort of level of support but the support on these big companies is like non-existent they don't have a phone number or you have to go through chat or you get a pop up from facebook that just says oh covid-19 restricted our employees so now we're just not going to do anything about your problem you right. know so they 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 really don't care about their users and the end user the uh, the exception is microsoft app and Mac microsoft programs i mean those you can really get support you give them a credit card and it's on average to fix a problem with any of Microsoft apps, Word, Exchange, Excel, even SQL Server is generally between $500 and $1,000. They'll fix it for you. And you get transferred over to somebody in India or Pakistan who will literally take care of your problem, but you got to pay them for it. And But this doesn't exist in the Google land or the Facebook land. I mean... <laughs> Getting a hold of Facebook, right. <laughs> and that's nasty. I don't think that that is a fair practice to have for any business. I mean, could you imagine purchasing something at a regular store and we're trying to return it or you, you brought it home and it was broken and you brought it back to the store and they just sat with their arms crossed and said, no, we're not going to help you? I mean, this is not a, a normal way to operate a business. You have to help the people. So, yeah, that's my two cents. <laughs> well, thanks. like and subscribe, <laughs> like and subscribe. The video game chronicle.com released a story by Chris Scullion. The entirety of Twitch has re reportedly been leaked. Source code and user payouts among the data released in 128 gigabyte torrent. Um, the anonymous hacker claims to have leaked the entirety of Twitter, including its source code and like how much uh, top streamers are getting paid. Credit card data, it wasn't leaked, that wasn't stored on Twitch, but uh, Twitch is an Amazon-owned streaming platform. So I guess the leak happened on 4chan on Wednesday, and... What do you think about this? Well, a couple things. One, you know, Twitch is leveraging this same old, same old. Google came out a couple days ago and said that they were going to require uh, uh, like 300 million accounts to use uh, second auth and using SMS as security. And this is being pushed at us as a solution somehow that SMS is secure, and it is not secure. There are many ways to get and spoof SMS numbers, cell phone numbers. So Twitch is coming out and saying, yeah, we got hacked, but there's something bigger going on, and that is that AWS services at the back end um, caused some kind of leak. This is all, all, it all looks to me like the same old, same old. Now, they, they did lose their source code, which is interesting, and this hacker claims that they did it uh, in a 4chan post. They, they claim that they did this because they were really invested in the video game, quote, um, systems and that Twitch was acting like a baron and acting like big data. And uh, of course it is because it's part of uh, Amazon, which is, which is for all intensive purposes is the cloud. I mean, they, you know, they, they dominate and control everything. So it looks like they were uh, also uh, making a company 
competition for steam and that also got breached in all, including the source code so we're going to see what the fallout is on all of this um in the next coming days but the one passwords for uh logging in were breached uh as well but but they were store encrypted so they have to be cracked so there, that's the that's the thing. They are saying turn on two-factor authentication. You're saying two-factor authentication isn't secure, but I know because I actually stream chess on Twitch, so they hacked me. Um, is that when you go to log on to Twitch, you put in your username, you put in your password, you put in your 2FA if you have that enabled. But they have a link where they email you a code, and you have to put in the code. So that's actually three factors. If you have 2FA on as well, you have username and password, 2FA, and this code that gets emailed to your email account. That's, so a, that's I, very true. That's very yeah, true. Yeah, I, th I think that they're, they're in not so bad shape, you know, and yeah. at, least the, at least the passwords were encrypted. Right. So they and have, they, they I have mean, to crack them. Since we started doing this podcast thing, too, um, <laughs> Honey and I have notice that some of the radio streams just use the cookie so they email you it's really weird they want you to log in they you give them your email address they send you an email when you click on the email it pops open the browser and you're logged in <laughs> yeah it's really really like cookie based uh, although i mean microsoft's password listing isn't that kind of the same thing aren't but, they just using no, those are databases, and Google's database is another one. They store the database off with the credentials of the login. Uh, so it's encrypted, but it's encrypted with what other username and password you have on the box. So you have to... Um, you have to open... It. I don't remember what Microsoft, the way that Microsoft... Actually, they store that in the... I think they store that in the hive. They don't do that in a separate file. I think. I think. It's um I have I have to look. It's been too long since I I looked at that cuz I don't store my data in those things. Don't I see. Don't, <laughs> don't do that, man. <laughs> it's dangerous. Um it's really easy to get your data. It's sorry to hear that Twitch guys, but you know, gamers will be gamers. <laughs> <laughs> so from the hacker news network on october 5th ravi lakishman releases an article apache warns of a zero day exploit in the wild patch your servers now apache is uh, addressing two security vulnerabilities one's a path traversal vulnerability and one's a file disclosure flaw in its hcp server now a path disclosure vulnerability is when you have an address in the URL bar and the address says like several different words or numbers or combinations of both and you backspace. So you're like moving backwards and closer and closer to root on the file server. And then you hit unintended pages that they didn't want you to hit. So that's kind of like path traversal or when you add dot, 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 slash, dot, 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 slash, dot, 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 slash dot 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 slash and it moves you all the way back to the root directory and you start seeing server configuration files that so i'm not saying that those are the exact path traversal flaws in apache but it's something like that that's what path traversal is and then file disclosure flaw also so you might want to update apache if you don't know what apache is apache is pretty much the most common web server that has ever been existed. I mean, you can argue now that um, Nginx is also very popular and a comparable now Cloudflare's servers are, are popular. But back in the day and still today, Apache was really a dominant leader in, in having web server technology. Well, there's Microsoft too. Oh, and Microsoft, yeah. You can't forget about Microsoft. They... I'm sorry, I'm always forgetting about Microsoft. <laughs> sorry. They, they, can, they can be hacked. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cool, thank you. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> the thing with Apache is if you have a, a website, um, 
on the internet, your server, your ISP probably is using Apache. So give them a call and say, hey, did you update this? Because I'll tell you, not all of them will. <laughs> So it's uh it's CVE two thousand twenty one four one seven seven three. It only is affecting Apache version two point four point forty eight. Ash Dalton and C Panel security team are credited with the discovery and reporting it in September two thousand twenty one. Thanks thanks for watching us and we appreciate it. You have a great day. Bye bye.